Alright, so I figured it'd be kind of cool to go and do uh, some vlogging and stuff. I've always kind of been opposed to it. Not necessarily been opposed to it, but it's kind of like I never really wanted to do it. Uh, before, it always kind of seemed like, well, who wants to watch people talk about random stuff all day? And then, and then I found a guy who I do enjoy watching talk about random shit all day, and it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, so I figured it'd be kind of fun to go and do on my channel that has other random things for me on there, like my Legos and uh, things like that. So uh, what is the date today? Today is uh, June 10th, 2020, AKA Armageddon year. Um, we've been quarantined for like three months now. It's kind of the way things are going. And then there's some other stuff going on, of course, that are all making news and all of that. Um, so that's of course all over YouTube. Everybody knows about that kind of stuff. Uh, one of the things that's, <laughs> that's, uh, a side, not a side effect, but one of the things from being in quarantine is that a lot of places aren't open that you kind of, you, you know, they're always there um, and you can't go and you can't do anything with them because they're not open, uh, but you're used to them always being there. One of those things is a haircut uh, place, AKA a salon, maybe a barber shop, <laughs> whatever, uh, whichever one, you know, is fun to go to. Um, so I haven't been able to get a haircut for three months now and that's something that is just, I don't know. It's like I don't usually care. I usually kind of skimp on my haircuts anyway. I usually let them go too long between them. And um, yeah, I guess. But the thing is, when I do it, it's like, oh, I'm going to make it right now. I'm going to make, make the haircut appointment right now. And I'm going to go do it. And we'll just get this taken care of. And now it's like, okay, I actually really want a haircut. And it's been, yeah, like two or three months. And the story behind that is I just went to a brand new haircut place, a new salon, uh, which is like two blocks from my work or whatever. And I was like, oh, this is a great, great situation because now, um, you know, I can just go there after work. And so that was cool. They're fine with making appointments at like 425 or something. Uh, and I get done work at 430. So that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, they colored my hair, which is neat. And sun decided to go down or behind a cloud right now. So, um, you probably can't see it. There's like a little bit of gold in there. And I thought they did a really good job with that. So I was like, okay, I'll come back here again. And then I got an appointment scheduled and that was right after quarantine started. And so they give me a call back a couple days beforehand. And they're like, hey, uh, we gotta postpone this because of quarantine a month. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then after about a month, I knew, or I noticed it was coming up. I noticed it, I noodled it. I noticed it was coming up. And so I was like, well, hey, I'll give them a call and make sure, because I hadn't heard anything from them. And then they're like, no, no, they'll call you. And I'm like, okay. So I waited like two weeks, never got anything. And I called back again and I'm like, hey, we have some other books here. And they're like, no, 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 they'll call you. And then she was really adamant about like, not checking and that the other person was gonna call me or whatever. Um, it's like, whatever. So, I just kind of kept getting the run around there, and finally I called and left a voicemail because apparently they stopped answering. And, um, yeah, these were like a couple weeks beforehand, so that was real fun. I did that, and I left my message, and I'm like, hey, give me a call back, please. You know, and I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt because this is a new place, and I just wanted to see because they seem like a really good place. And so finally she texted me back, and then it's like two weeks from the date that she texted me still. So I get it. Um, I get that there's delays and stuff, but it kind of sucks because I wish the communication had been a little better. And I think the only reason I even care about that is because I make it a point to go and communicate when I'm doing my work. It's like, hey, I'm going to be a day late with this. Here's what's going on, you know. Mm. It's been ungodly hot here. Not ungodly hot, but... Um, you know, it's a Minnesota summer, and it's a legitimate Minnesota summer this time, which is cool. So it's it's been in the 90s this week, and it's perfect, actually. I think it's really nice. Uh, I say this not as a road worker or anything. I say it as somebody who works from home during this whole thing. Um, and so it's not, the air feels really nice. It reminds me of being really young because it's, you know, you can get, you can have temperatures where it's really hot, and it's dry, you know, and that's kind of cool because then it's, it's hot, but it's not thick air. And you can get it other times where it's really humid 
and it's a lot colder and so the humidity makes it warmer and it kind of evens out and right now it's at that point where it's not super hot but it's not super humid it's like it's like 90s but it's not very humid and so you kind of get that in between where it just feels nice you know if it was a little bit more humid it'd be too friggin hot if it was a little bit higher temperature it'd be too friggin hot but it's been really nice we've been getting storms and stuff and i've really been missing storms um because we had a wild winter again like we've been having the last couple of years where it's just starts in november and goes until i don't know may uh april or may and that sucks i don't like my winters to be in may so um that's kind of cool and and yeah, so I'm enjoying the weather for once. And here's something crazy that I never... It seems like common sense to anybody else, right? It's like, hey, uh, you should be drinking water. And so now I've been drinking water. I got, I finally uh, bit the bullet and bought a, uh, a water cooler for my apartment, which is great. And that's probably some of the best money I've ever spent in my life. Because I don't know about anybody else, but for me, it's a situation of convenience for what I'm going to drink. I've got, uh, I don't think it's in the frame, but I've got a mini fridge right here, which I keep packed now with, with pop and stuff. So if I'm playing games, I can just reach over and grab them, which is <laughs> super, super cool. This is my, this is my studio slash um, office slash game room, by the way. And so it kind of satisfies all three of those. Um, and so if I can get everything right there, it's pretty cool. My, my water cooler is just, that's my kitchen over there. So my water cooler is just right right outside my door so I can go get water really quick but the thing was when I was younger um what like 10 to now <laughs> probably I like to drink a lot of pop which is fine if you don't lead an active lifestyle which I didn't it was a lot of computers and video games and stuff after we didn't have to have gym in in class anymore or gym class because it was like we had gym class up until junior year, and then I think it was elective after that. You had to have, um, what was it? There was some other way that it was elective. So we had it for most of my my school career. But, but anyway, after that, I was like, hey, this is great, because I hate gym class. I don't really hate gym class, or I didn't. I really just hated running a lot. It's like, when you're a kid, it's like, oh, we gotta run for three minutes, and when you're a kid, that's like forever, because you're dying, because the gym teacher's like, Hey, you're not running. You're walking. You gotta, you gotta run. Like, I'm dying. Can't you see? But whatever. But anyway, after that, it's like okay, I'm not gonna go do a lot of exercise and play games. And so I got pretty hooked on not drinking as much water and drinking pop instead. So I did. And now the thing was I couldn't, uh, I couldn't deal with the heat. Like my brain would cook. Is what it felt like. And now that I've got my water right here, it's just easily available. And that's why I drank a lot of pop before too, because it's just like you have it in a can, it's super convenient, but now that the water's convenient, I'm drinking that like crazy. I drink way more water than I drink pop now. Um, in fact, if I drink a can of pop or two in one day, and too quick, like I feel sick, that's probably healthy. <laughs> you know, it's probably like my, my base level of being well before was down here, and it's like, oh, this is just how it is. And now it's like, oh, I'm not drinking pop as much, and now it's back up to normal. But my whole point is, I'm trying to get back to, so I talk so friggin' much about different things, is that now that it's hot, you know, I didn't sweat before much because I didn't have any water in me, but now I've got a bunch of water in me. And actually being in the heat is a lot more enjoyable. I still prefer being in like, if I had a choice between being in a colder environment or a warm environment, I'd much rather be in a colder environment, which is why I live here. Um, but it's kind of cool to have the window open and just like, yeah, I'm slimy as hell all day, but it actually feels good, you know? It's, it's like when you get done working out and you're all sweaty, it's almost, maybe there's some conditioning there and I feel like I've accomplished something by sitting here doing a lot of mouse clicking and stuff for eight hours, I, I don't know. But either way, it feels really nice. And so that's a new chapter in my life. I'm starting to enjoy the heat again. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Uh, that's a big deal. And then also, what else is new? I've been I've been trying to do a whole bunch of stuff with recording. Um, more stories from when I was a kid. I started out using a VHS camera. Actually, I started out with a tape recorder. I had this cool one that I think I got when I was three or four. I think I was four. I recorded myself, and I actually wore it out to the point where it 
It just had been used too much. It was like a kid recorder thing with a handle. And I keep trying to find it, but I never can. I find one that's like it. It looked like it was Fisher Price, but it was a white body with I think a blue speaker and some red and yellow mixed in there, some red and I think white keys. And there's one that's just like it, but is not the exact same one. I've checked my old videos just to make sure I'm not crazy. And it looks a lot like it from Fisher Price, but it's not the same. But it's, it's made for kids, so you can like hit it on things and each other and stuff. And I used that, and then I made a bunch of VHS tapes when I was four as well, and all this stuff. And then, um, right after high school, it just dropped off. It's like if you had like a line graph, it's like, oh, tape today, tape today, more tapes, you know, high school, a whole bunch. And then just, like, it just crashed straight down right after high school. And I think I was just too busy doing other stuff. Um, and also it was nice because I never had my, my own stuff except for my tape recorder. Uh, I guess I had like a little boom box that could record stuff, uh, but otherwise it's like I used my uncle's VHS camera, I used mom's miniature VHS or VHS compact, VHS-C camera, and then I used dad's Hi8, and yeah, and so finally, I uh, after watching, this YouTuber I should say is Nintendo Capri Sun, the guy is... If I, if I was going to meet anybody from YouTube, he's pretty much the only one I'd be like, you know, I really want to meet this guy. Just, it's like he's here and the next person is probably like here. Not to say this person's, you know, insignificant, but it's like, this is the guy that I watch the most of. And I don't know, it's just random stuff like vlogs and he does lunch plays and stuff too. But uh, he has cassette tapes from when he was in high school and it reminded me a lot of what I did. And I'm like, yeah, you know, that makes me really... It, it lights that fire inside you, and it's like, I gotta go and do that again. And <laughs> it's so, I think that's what really gets me is that the stuff that he has parallels parts in my life so much that it just, it's like, well, what the heck? Why why aren't I doing this? You know, so this guy's doing it. You can still do it. He's 10 years older than I am. He's like in his 40s, I think he's 45 or something, or 44, but it's like he's still doing it. You know, he's been doing it for the last 20 years. It's like, well, I actually been doing that too. And so I went and bought the first thing I bought. I got this guy. Um, I have it zoomed up a little bit, so I'm, I'm hoping it's in frame, but this thing has saved my life, uh, <laughs> or at least um, helped me out a little bit, because, you know, um, I just moved to this town a couple of years ago, and I didn't know a lot of people, and so, you know, you still want to talk to people, but when you get older, people are busy and whatever, so it's, it's kind of cool to just go and talk to yourself um, and listen to yourself, which is what I did as a kid, so it came pretty natural, but surprising how much almost practice it takes to get back into it again and so I'm still working on that uh, because you grow up and you start to get an idea of what you know you're not the only person in the universe <laughs> everybody else has has points of view and stuff too so now when you talk you're thinking of different things uh, like that uh, as opposed to when I'm four I'm just talking straight out of my mind um, but anyway no I think it's been really cool and then I bought um, oh shoot I bought a video camera which is, it's not the highest quality by any means, and that was what I wanted. Um, I go back and I look at my VHS tapes, and VHS has that quality, I should turn my phone off when I'm doing this, but um, VHS has that specific quality where at the time you watch it, and it's like, yeah, you knew it wasn't as good as like a cinema or some blockbuster movie at the theater, but it was still good. It was like, oh wow, you can record yourself and you can watch it on TV, and it was good quality, and of course you watch it now, and like VHS is I mean, they're not terrible quality, but they haven't st stood the test of time to say this is still top of the line. Like, if you put a laser disc in now, you know, I've just recently found out that's an analog format. I thought that was digital, but um, they'll use the laser disc rips because the quality on that is still amazing. I mean, it's not probably as good as the newest stuff they're putting out now, you know, the absolute cutting edge, but it's still like, for that time, it's still pretty sweet from what I understand. I'm, I haven't watched a Blu-ray, but um, the point is the VHS has that specific quality, and it's probably a nostalgia factor at this point because I made a shitload of VHS tapes, and in fact, I don't know if you can see them or not, but I'll have to show it at the end of the video or something, but I've got boxes, uh, well, a box, <laughs> of specific hand-picked VHSs from Mom's Place um, that specifically deal with me, and <laughs> so I've got a bunch of those, and then I've got, that's my work computer, I've got a bunch of my VHS-C tapes, 
over here as well, again, that are specifically to me, and a bunch of my high eight tapes. So I've got a bunch of those. Um, they're just everywhere. And it's, it's just, I think it's the fact that it's, it's not the highest quality possible and that I like. Um, it signifies more of like a home movie kind of deal and that's the feeling that I want. So when I bought my new camera, my new video camera, camcorder, I specifically got it, you know, not to be 4K. Also, it was cheap. It was like 250 Cheap as far as camcorders go, right, for this day and age. Um, it's not the one I'm using now. The one I'm using now is my nice photography camera. It's a Sony A6000. It's not made for video, but um, for this particular situation, I'd rather have a higher quality, high frame rate kind of situation. But this other one, it's, it's sweet. It's 1080, and it's still 60 frames a second, but it still has that... It's not grainy quality, but it has... My computer's falling apart now. I don't have it screwed down. Um, it has that quality about it to where it feels like this generation's VHS, but it's not bad. There's no tracking or anything on it. Um, and so that's really cool. And so when I'm doing like just random... I hate to call them vlogs because I don't plan on posting them anywhere. They're a lot of like... They're, they are video logs. But, you know, they're home... They're tapes to me. Like, it's funny. It's... You hear old people, or not older people, but you hear people above my generation, my my parents' generation will always say, oh, are you filming this? Or are you taping this? And I find myself saying the same thing. You know, it's like, oh, are you taping this? Like, well, they have a phone in their hand. They're not taping anything unless it's some weird-ass hybrid hipster kind of phone with a cassette tape built in, I guess. Which would be kind of cool. I'm not going to lie about that. But, but it's funny, so you still think of it as, like, tapes. I like it a lot better that way because, again, when I watch Capri Sun, he'll be like, hey, I got all these tapes. And when you do tapes, it's like albums. You know, um, Jimmy Page famously had this thing where he didn't want people to dub their their records onto tapes to make mixtapes because he wanted to have, this is what I've read anyways, he wanted to have the or specific order of their music um, in that order. He wanted that specific order on each on each record. And I feel like when you're doing tapes, it's the same situation. If you put in one tape, like if I put in my, my I'm talking videotapes, cassette tapes, or CDs too, but if you put in one of my videotapes, it's that, that segment of, of life, right? Unless you record on it once every couple of years. But usually what happens, at least with me, was you record all of that tape within the period of two weeks, if not sooner, right? You'd use it all up. And so it's like a snapshot, just a bite-sized chunk of that part. So you know if you put that tape in, you're going to get something from that section of life. Where with, um, let's say you have a whole bunch of digital stuff, and it's all in one big folder, you can just click around, you know? And that's cool, that's great for organization, but it takes away a little bit of the magic. And that's probably why people like cassette tapes, that's why I like CDs. I, you know, I wouldn't want to get, I specifically still buy CDs for that reason. I don't, I like to enjoy them in the bite-sized generations that they were. Instead of going on Spotify and being like, okay, here's a playlist of everything this artist has ever done. It's overwhelming. You don't get to appreciate each part. This is a side topic, but it's the same thing with tapes for me. It's like I like watching one chunk of tape and <laughs> appreciating that part of that, that part in life that's on that tape in that section of time or whatever. And so, um, so you can't get that anymore unless you have tapes or if you bought a new memory card every time you want to record something which would be ridiculous. Although actually, it's not that ridiculous because they're cheap enough now to where you can pay, what, 15 bucks for a, 15 bucks, what, what, 15 bucks for a, an SD card. And we'd pay 12, 15 bucks for a two or three pack of uh, high eights anyway. I mean, you could do that. It's, it's pointless unless you wanted to keep that specific air of magic, I, I guess, I don't know. but. Anyway, the point is, the part that you can save, that I can save, is I use that camcorder and it still feels, like I said, like this generation's VHS. It's fun to watch it, but I know that if I want higher quality out there, there is stuff you can get, right? I can get a 4K camera. Um, and you don't have to pay, you don't have to mortgage a house to get a 4K camera now. It's the norm, almost. You know, it's like 1080 is good, but 4K is where the standard is now, and so... Um, you can get 1080 stuff way cheaper. Like I said, I paid 200. I think it was 220 or 250. I think it was 220 um, for that camcorder. So that was really cool, and I'm really glad I did because it's fun. I forget how much fun it is to just go and take your camcorder and walk around or hang out with friends 
And um, when I watch the old tapes, I've been backing up. Wow. I've, the reason all my tapes are behind me is I've been backing them up and digitizing them so that I can have archives of them because they're not going to last forever. And uh, it's really cool to go and look at that and look back and how okay people are with you after you do it enough. It's like if you hang out with the same bunch of friends and you're recording videos with them, after a while they don't they don't put on an air anymore. They're just talking like they normally would, or or you know like something switches and they they get into a point where it's kind of fun to go back and watch it. And that's the biggest part, too, or one of the bigger parts, is when you go back and watch it, you know, at the time, like, right when I'm doing this right now, like, this is my life, this is current, this is where I am, uh, it's nothing exciting. But, you know, in 10 years, I'm going to go back and be like, hey, I remember when I was I was in that studio and I was making that first vlog or, or whatever it is, and it's, like, something that you can't, that you can't plan for and have it be the same impact. Like, I, after watching all these tapes, it makes me want to try and make something like this now with that future in mind, but you can't do it. It's, you won't get the same result because you're not, you're not, I'm not talking, I wouldn't be talking to, to you now the same way that I had talked to my tape when I was five. You know, at the time I was just talking to it fully genuinely, and if I, I wasn't trying to say like, oh, in 10 years I'm gonna look at this, but, but now if I had that mentality, it's like, all right, 10 year old, or 10 year old Zach, 40, 43 year old Zach, oh, in 10 years, like, you remember this? Ha ha ha. Uh, there's some weird inception going on there, too, because I know I'm going to look at this when I'm 43 and be like, I do remember that little tear in my eye that I'm not 33 anymore, or something. Um, but anyway, I'm hoping to make some more of these and just post them as a time capsule kind of thing, but also. No, maybe not at a time capsule is the wrong word. Just, just something because I want to I wanna talk um, and record it and talk to my future self, but not with the intent like I was just saying. Just to kind of be like, hey, what's up? You know, and if somebody else watches this and gets a kick out of it, well, that's that's cool too, I guess. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much all I got for right now. There's more stuff to talk about, but... Uh, I don't know, nothing too crazy. It's been pretty boring staying inside all day. All day, all month, almost all year so far now. Because we went into quarantine in March, and it's June now, so. March, April, May, <laughs> June. So, yeah, more of this year has been spent sequestered than not. But at least you can still go outside and stuff. But anyway, it's getting too long now, so. 